My next guest is going to be taking on Sabo Fadai this Saturday in a 165 pound catchweight fight in the main event of Rise FC3 coming up here at the Landing Sports Center in Chilliwack, BC. It is Dewan Owens joining me here on the program for the very first time. Dewan, how are you? I'm feeling good, brother. Putting in work. You caught me like mid workout, man. So getting this garage session in. Then I'm going to go get some uh, some training in the gym, but I'm feeling good, man. I'm ready. Yeah, well, everyone's excited for this fight, man. And props to you for stepping up on short notice and taking it. You fought a lot of notable guys, uh, Jordan Rinaldi, Marlon Chito Vera. You know, you also fought uh, former CES champions, uh, Louis Felix and Nate Andrews. Uh, how did this come together with a, a guy who fights in the U.S. Uh, fighting on a, a card in Chilliwack, British Columbia? I think, uh, you know, th these days they have a lot of different groups where promoters and fighters can, you know, interact. And asked them, I think someone sent me a message. Someone was asking about a fight opportunity uh, for someone who had a passport and no record. So I think that was one of the biggest uh, obstacles that they came in. They, they, they uh, wanted a, an international fight, but, you know, that kind of notice and, you know, people having a passport, I think, you know, that, that, that put me in a position to, uh, to jump right in. When did this journey start for you? How did you get involved in combat sports? Well, you know, I used to be in uh, the Marine Corps when I was young, man. I went in when I was 17, so we that was around uh, the time the Ultimate Fighter was coming out. So, you know, my roommates and I, you know, we used to watch uh, Ultimate Fighter. And, of course, you know, we delusions and grandeur, right? We're like, oh, man, I can do that. You know, I would love to do that. And then, um, you know, around the time my enlistment was up, uh, you know, I went, checked out a, a MMA gym, and then, you know, the rest is history. I mean, obviously, there's a lot, you know, involved, but that's, that's the gist of it. When was that moment where you knew you wanted to do this, not just as a hobby, but as a career? Probably after I won my first Emmy fight, man, it's crazy because it's like for that moment, you know, everything in your life is right. No matter what's going on, you know, when you get your hand raised, I just, I'll let me, I got I to gotta do this shit again. I got to feel this again. And uh, along with fighting, what else do you do for a living? What pays the bills for you right now? Uh, I, I teach chess. I run, a, um, I, I work at an MMA gym. I also teach uh, self-defense. So, you know, a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, man, that helps too, because obviously with fighting, the schedule can be kind of crazy. You need something flexible. So having like, you know, multiple revenue streams definitely, you know, gives me the flexibility to, uh, to do what I want to do. And I, and I run a nonprofit also. So that, 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 you know, keeps me motivated, keeps me on the grind. That's great. We'll plug that at the end for sure. Definitely want to do that. So you teach chess. How did this come together? Have you been playing it since you were a young kid? Yeah, man. I, I, honestly, chess was a big, big part of my life at one point, man. Um, I was very, very serious about it. Um, and now I just teach online, you know, the thing, the beauty of teaching online, you can have clientele anywhere. You know what I mean? I, we've got clients in the UK and things like that. So I love it. Every once in, I also teach like, um, children, uh, chess at the local library for free on the weekend, but that's, you know, not for, for, for money. But, you know, again, we talk about money economics. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta charge folk if it's online, man. It's good. That's a, a man of uh, all trades uh, as well, which is uh, very cool. Um, now, one of the cool things about this fight is that it's at 165 pounds. And I was looking at your record. I noticed you haven't fought uh, in a heavier weight class, at least uh, not. At, you fought at 170. Uh, that was back in September of 2015. Is it nice going into a fight, not having to focus as much on the cut? Yeah, it does feel good, man. I mean, uh, I don't know what fight it was. That I, fought. I, don't think, I don't know if I fought at 170. But I think it was probably another catch weight. But usually if it's a late notice fight, there's a catch weight. I mean, I've took some late notice fights before and people have too. you do what you got to do. But, um, and it, you know, it works out good sometimes, but sometimes you focus on the weight more than the actual fight. And that could be a deterrent. So when we, um, when I was contacted, the bout that I was replacing was a, a title fight and I really wanted to fight for a title, but at the same time, you know, the, the risk just wasn't worth the reward. I, I, like if I, I would essentially be having a camp where I'm focusing more on cutting weight than actual skill training. So, you know, uh, I asked, you know, could we do it at a catch weight? And then one, one wonderful thing about this organization that I like is that they have uh, 10 pound uh, gaps between each weight class. So they were like, no, we can actually have a, a 165 class. And uh, Saba was gracious enough to, uh, to accept that. So it's all good. This would be uh, closer to our walking around weight. What do you know about Saba? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Yeah, I hadn't heard of him before uh, the fight, but I mean, he looks, you know, pretty good. Got a decent record, solid. He's been around, you know, I mean, at this point, uh, you know, I fought internationally four times. I beat UFC vets, Bellator vets. Everybody I fight is going to be pretty good. So, you know, it's just the nature of the game. He he's solid. Uh, he's he's looks he looks to be tall for the weight class. Uh, kind of rangy, real technical. Um, but you know, I think I've got a lot of a lot of a lot of physical advantages, and also you know, I, um, I pride myself on being a, a technician too. So I'm just gonna just just make it a fight, man. Just you know, be a technical beast.
How much do you make of the fact that he hasn't fought since April of uh, 2016 and he's running the show? I mean, I'm, I'm sure this is a first for you where you're fighting someone that is also the president of the promotion. Like, do you feel like that pressure is going to impact him in this fight? I, I don't put too much stock in the fact that he hasn't uh, fought in a while because that just depends on, on the person. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it, it depends on how much he's, you know, how much he's been training mentally. You know, I know he's a fighter. You know, he's, he's fought some tough guys. Um, he obviously is not picking easy fights. He could have easily just picked someone uh, local if he wanted to, you know, someone to just roll over. So that tells me something about, uh, you know, his mindset. And um, but once, even if he is kind of flat initially or something, once the fight starts, you know, he's a fighter, so his body's gonna gonna do what it knows to do. Um, as far as him being the pr promoter, yeah, I mean, I guess that could add a, another uh, level of pressure for him. That's something he's got to deal with, you know, but I don't want to put stock into hoping that that's a factor. You know, the one thing I can control is my preparation and my skill. And I feel like that um, I'm, I'm probably the most skilled. I'm the most skilled that I've ever been. And mentally, I'm in a really, really good place. You know, um, I'm coming off. Uh, my last fight was a, was a title fight at CES. It was a loss. And I got to be I got to be honest with you, man. It, you know, not to sound soft, man, but broke my heart, man. You know what I mean? It really, really hurt. You know, um, in 2017, I had an amazing year competition-wise, man. I was winning winning everything, you know, jiu-jitsu matches, my pro kickboxing debuts, another kickboxing fight, my MMA fights, and I won my first uh, MMA title. So I, I, I felt like, look, man, this is my time. You know, the universe is operating in my favor. You know, it's time to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm just – so I kind of got caught up in this, this fairy tale uh, that, like, you know, if you just do good shit, good shit will happen, and I don't know. And then um, when I lost that fight, like I said, man, it, bro – fucking crushed me man you know mentally um went back to school for a semester and because i was in school obviously i couldn't fight because i was you know i was focusing and um i missed it man it, you know this is the longest time that it hasn't been as long as uh saba obviously but this is the longest time that i haven't fought since i was an amateur and man when i say i miss this shit i miss it like i come back in the gym you know and i'm, I'm whooping ass these guys have been training the whole time i took time off which you know of course how you do against your partners is not a barometer of what you do in a fight but it does tell me that listen man you know you have some you know you have some 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 gifts you have some skills you know use this you you know um this shit doesn't translate to a lot of other things outside of mma unfortunately that's why i like the fact that saba I'm, i don't know him and i don't mean this in a condescending way but i'm proud of him for um you know setting up the next phase of of, of his life and i wish he had i hope he has success with the show i mean i'm yeah you know saba like i said wish he was success i gotta bust your ass first but then you know and then after that, you know, I'm sure we could be good friends. I'll be one of your main fighters up there, man. Be, be your main ticket seller. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'm happy for him, man. And, you know, all jokes aside, wish him success. You talked about preparation there. Where are you training right now and who are some of your main training partners? Yeah, so right now uh, I'm training with my Muay Thai coach, Josh Brackett. You know, he's opening up his, uh, his Muay Thai gym, 36 Chambers soon. Right now well, we're at the garage just getting that early morning session in. And th then I'm going to go to uh, Duke. I live a couple miles from Duke University. I'm going to get a run in. And then uh, tonight I'm going to go to the MMA gym, uh, Elevate MMA Academy. And then depending on how I feel, I might get one more session, uh, some wrestling in with a good buddy of mine named Ali, man. So I'm right now I'm on a grind. Like we said, I didn't have a lot of notice. So, um, you know, I'm just getting it in. But the skill is already there. You know, this shit is not just about a camp. This is like a uh, – this is so many years of just – training and now it's just getting the machine ready my body is the machine so i'm just tightening the machine up you know the skill is already there so i'm just i feel good man i, I really I'm, I'm really pumped who's gonna be in your corner for this fight um a buddy of mine uh harold hubbard he runs the gym pmac usa lucha libre brown belt jujitsu brown belt um good you know good good grappler he has got a boxing background too my other buddy jeff shaw he runs a school uh bellingham uh jujitsu it's in uh bellingham uh washington so i'm gonna have i'm gonna have a lot of people coming from uh from washington too so that's i didn't realize uh uh this place where we're fighting at what, what's, what's the town called Chil uh, chilliwack uh, it's chilliwack. it's about uh, yeah it's it's uh it's you know about an hour out uh vancouver actually so yeah i didn't realize yeah. it was so close to washington so i have a good amount of people there i had taught some some uh some nogi seminars and self-defense seminars in washington so a lot of the students will be coming out to support so i have, have a little crowd there but yeah those two will be in my corner man how do you see this fight unfolding on Saturday? Mm, I, I, I'm not trying to, I'm going to tell you, man, I'm not trying to play around with any judges. You know, uh, <laughs> you know how it is. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? You go another, you go another state. It's already, but you go another country, man. Stop playing. So you know, I'm trying to go out there and get that finish. Um, I, I probably see it ending in a submission. You know, maybe you know, dropping them or taking them down, round and pound till they till they give me something. Um, like I said, I just feel like I'm the best I've ever been skill wise, man. I'm incredibly well rounded. I've got great, good grappling, good striking, good wrestling, and I, I blend it together. Uh, I blend it together pretty well. So I'm, I'm ready, man. And, and not to look past this fight, but what is the plan after this? Do you have any fights lined up? Because I know in the regional scene, you you got to keep moving. You got to uh, get fight. it, man. Yeah, yeah. you got to get it, man. Um, I'm I'm uh, I've got some offers for some kickboxing stuff. Um, um, I'm, I'm undefeated as a pro kickboxer, so I've got a got a kickboxing offer coming up. Uh, always MMA offers on the table. Tell you, man, I'll tell you some behind the scenes stuff. Um, the the guy, uh, the brother Darcy, real cool cat. We've been talking when he contacted me. I was supposed to have a fight in, um, I think it was July. That was the first fight that I was supposed to fight on this promotion. And uh, we were in negotiations for that. Then this one kind of pulled up. So I was like, okay, well, you know, shit, I'll do both. So hopefully I'm not dropping dropping the ball. No, no, no. We, we uh, I just did a preview with Darcy a second ago. So uh, that, that news okay. is out there, the, the card in July. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, I'm supposed to, um, so I'm going to be on that one. And um, I don't know if that's going to be for, but I don't know how that's going to work out. Because I know this one was supposed to be for a belt. I don't know, but I know this is my first time on a promotion. I want to go out there. I want to put on a show. I want to let them know, you know, look, when I come to fight, I, I, I always put on a show. I always come to win. I fight aggressive. And again, I just, you know, I want to put on a masterful display of martial skill. Have you been to Canada before? I haven't. I haven't been to Canada. Man. Wow. Okay. Well, you place. picked a good, uh, good place to go because uh, British Columbia is one of the nicer provinces here in Canada I've heard, as far man. as the scenery. So. I've heard, man. So I'm, again, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Well, we're looking forward to this fight, man. I can't wait. Uh, Dewan, thank you so much for taking the time. It was great uh, talking to you. Uh, it's coming up here this Saturday. It is Rise FC3. Now, if you don't live in the area, you can watch this on Fight TV. You can order it online. Uh, so it's going to be great. Uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours, man. Thank you, man. Um, you can find me on uh, Facebook, just Dewan Owens, D-J-U-A-N-O-W-E-N-S. I got a fan page too, but just just add my normal page. My sister runs my fan page. Um, on, on Instagram, it's just the one, and I think it's four underscores. So DJ UAN, four underscores, or three, whatever comes up first. Um, I want to give a big fast shout out to K Side MMA. Uh, check them out for all your MMA gear and apparel. Uh, Toro BJJ. Um, shout out to Elevate MMA, MMA Institute, PMAC USA, uh, 36 Chambers, Muay Thai. All, all my, look, all my people, all my family, y'all know who y'all are. If I miss anybody, stop it. Y'all already know I'm rocking with you, man. Um, and also, shout out to uh, Fighting for Uganda. I told you it's a nonprofit where we. Uh, we go to different uh, continents, uh, I mean, uh, different countries in Africa, specifically, mainly Uganda, and we teach uh, self-defense to combat gender-based violence. It's something that's very important to me. So get familiar.